is a sense that even if she is economically wrong, Liz Truss on the tax cuts now urgent budget, sooner than expected, is touching a nerve with ordinary members of the Conservative Party. You guys and gals are too clever. You talk about economic theory and the rest of it. Joe Public wants help now. Isn't she right? I think the key thing is that you're absolutely right, that people in my constituency, members of the party, do need help now. I think the, the danger of what Liz has been saying today, though, is that that will only be delivered by tax cuts. Um, I think for so many of my constituents, particularly pensioners, uh, that's just not going to cut it for them when they're seeing their energy bills go up you know, by hundreds of percent, you know, potentially going up over the last couple of years by two and a half, three thousand pounds. They don't pay enough tax to be, for that to be cut from them. Rishi's already outlined how he wants to help later this year with cutting VAT off energy bills. But one of the things that we're going to have to do is to ensure that everybody can get through this crisis. And Rishi, I think, has shown uh, through the last couple of years, whether it's the help during the pandemic or all the help uh, with cost of living since, that he's prepared to really step up. And it's going to have to be more than tax cuts for big business. I mean, I, you know, and when, when you think about it, I mean, basically, Liz's plan is to reduce the tax on, uh, you know, EDF, any of the energy suppliers immediately. Mm. I mean, I don't really know how that's going to help my constituents who are really struggling with the cost of living today. And this is cheeky of me, but I'm going to say it anyway, but take me through it. How are you, having heard him describe, your man, Rishi, that, that any talk of tax cuts was fairy tale economics, that it was nonsense, then did a mighty handbrake turn that you've just referred to on VAT, and is now suddenly finding billions more reported in his extensive interview with the Sunday Times today to give yet more bailouts and what have you. At what point did you decide that this man was still watertight economically and consistent intellectually? Uh, so uh, let me take those points in turn, Alistair, because they are important points. Um, first of all, uh, what he's done throughout the crisis, uh, whether that's the COVID pandemic or more recently, is he's always stepped up to provide support where it's necessary. And he's always said that more support will be available. But on the big long-term question around taxes, um, Rishi has already outlined, uh, and it's happening next year, a cut in the basic rate of income tax. I think that's what people want to see. It benefits those in work and pensioners with small pensions as well. And he said that over the long term, that's what we want to do. We want a lower tax society than where we are. But in the short term, the biggest issue to address, and this is what he said, is around inflation. Because if we don't tackle inflation first, rather than trying to taxes first, uh, and with borrowed money, which is Liz's proposal, is that we have to do that because otherwise all you'll do is feed an inflationary cycle. And as much as I want to see people have more pounds in their pockets today... If they're totally eaten by inflation, then I just don't yeah. see a consistent approach there from Liz. So I think Rishi's outlined his long-term vision. He's always been consistent about providing more support when necessary. But he's also said that big ta tax cuts, the big corporates from day one, is not the answer to that. What we need to see is them investing for the long term, because that's how you really deliver better wages with increased productivity in the long term. All right. A, a very full and, and, and candid answer, for which I appreciate. Um, let me finish with you, and then I'm going to bring Sean in to, to, to uh, converse about one or two of the things that, that we've said here. But, but again, it's not a silly question. It, it, I know crystal clear from talking to all sorts of people, not least Conservatives behind the red wall, that one of the other problems that your man has is that, rightly or wrongly, he is perceived to have been the leading assassin of Boris Johnson, a guy who many of your constituents who wanted Brexit and voted for you because you were in the party led by Boris, who was promising <coughs> Brexit, etc., 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 up gets your man and stabs him in the back. Uh, well, I'd say that you asked me very early on, Alistair, in this interview about whether I've been contacted by Team Liz at any point. I was invited, uh, along with other MPs, for drinks back in October last year by Liz, essentially as part of that leadership uh, bid for, for her. I think, in fairness, all Cabinet ministers were uh, sniffing around that at the time. The idea that Rishi is somehow uh, a, a, you know, in a different league to the others is just uh, 
absolute nonsense. Uh, what I would also say is the answer that Rishi gave the other night at the hustings, when he said he just couldn't uh, face it anymore, especially following that Chris Pincher incident and the fact, allied to the fact that he also then had uh, differences with the uh, Prime Minister over economic policy. Um, I think that he showed actual leadership in uh, leaving at that stage. Um, it's not what I did. I've stayed as a, uh, as a junior PPS in the, the government. But Rishi uh, made his point uh, very clear on that. So I think the entire idea of that is nonsense, especially when um, the Prime Minister himself has said that he'd already lost the support of the Parliamentary Party. And we know there would have been that 92-22 committee vote uh, the next week. We know he'd have lost that, which is why the Prime Minister himself decided to stand down. Final question, then, and it flows beautifully from that. And just to remind folk listening to our conversation, PPS, Parliamentary Private Secretary, it means you're on the first rung of, of, of ministerial office. But much more importantly, you hear how it works, you see how senior figures behave and this, that and the other. So you, you've got a real sniff of how government works. Can these two work together when it's all over in the second week of September, announced in the first week of September, whether it be Liz or whether it be Rishi? Can they work together in the run-up to the general election? I think they can. And look, actually, you know, the oddest thing is that I was on Boris's leadership campaign uh, from early doors um, before I was an MP. Uh, Rishi was on it, and uh, Liz was also a supporter of Rishi, uh, of, of, of Boris at the, at, the at the time. So we've all worked together in the past. I'm sure we'll all work together in the future towards delivering a Conservative majority at the next general election. Because I think the one thing that we can all agree on is that the idea of going back to a Labour government at this stage with, you know, probably due to the electoral maths propped up by the Liberal Democrats, almost certainly having to rely on the SNP in confidence and supply. I mean, that would not only be an economic disaster for the country, but would also quite clearly tear the country apart because the deals that would have had to be done in order to achieve that coalition. So I think there's, there are big things at stake in this leadership contest, but I think when it comes together, there will be even bigger things, like the future of the country at the general election, and I'm sure we'll all be on the same side when it comes to that too.